I have always known that I wanted to be a zoologist, meaning I wanted to be somebody who was always around animals, and especially uh, animals that you know occurred in, in places far away, um, because I knew there was just such incredible diversity out there. When I was born, I didn't know what a herpetologist was. I, I was a little bit sheltered from science in my very early years. I loved all living things from day one. As soon as I learned there was a thing called a scientist, I wanted to be one. And reptiles and amphibians and, and other aspects of natural history are to me a, more of a calling than a job. A lot of the research that I conduct on amphibians and reptiles pertains to what we call taxonomy meaning the science of identifying and um, differentiating and naming different species. I use a whole variety of tools to study variation within and among populations to try to figure out what might be one species and what might be another. Most importantly to me are the natural history specimens. And that means we collect natural history specimens and we have a collection here at the museum that dates back to the 1800s of preserved specimens that document when and where an individual specimen was collected. And so we use those preserved specimens for all kinds of things, but one thing I especially use them for is to look at their morphology, their external appearance, their size, their shape, their coloration, and other characteristics of the animal. I care for the collection, so you know we use many different types of containers, uh, jars with uh, airtight or near airtight lids. We use forceps, we use scalpels, we use scissors, we use syringes, we use formaldehyde and ethyl alcohol and, and several other different kinds of chemicals, microscopes, rulers, calipers, tape measures, all sorts of things for, for taking data on specimens. And DNA sequence data can be a very powerful tool for telling you uh, the evolutionary history of a group of organisms and seeing if these things have been exchanging genes or not, whether they're reproductively isolated or not, or whether, and then whether they've evolved into two separate species. I will also use often recordings of frogs and we listen to the differences and we can analyze using our computer the differences in calls among different populations and we can determine whether one population is using the same kind of call to attract its mate as another. <laughs> 